good behavior of many thousands of Canadians in bars that opened in the wee hours or stayed open all night is having big conversation going. Thomas Lukasik is an MLA in Alberta. He put this tweet out. Would you agree that this weekend's change in alcohol sale regulations is evidence that we should be less restrictive all the time? That's got quite the conversation going, as I said, including Doug Horner, another cabinet minister, being asked about it. This is based on some discussions that happened from some, from some spokes, folks in social media, and it's great. I'm glad they're having it, and we'll put it in the mix. But there's, this is not a design of the government to move forward with any kind of decision. All right. It's not just Alberta talking about this. Conversations like it happening across the country. I know Toronto's having that conversation. And when I think of who I would find passed out at 6 a.m. in a Toronto gutter after the bars closed or stayed open all night, I think of David Menzies. He joins us now from our studios there. You know what, Brian? Just for your information, you smarty pants, I didn't have my first drink of alcohol until I was 23. I was in the Northwest Territories. I was freezing to death. And the guys on this fishing expedition, which was almost a disaster, said, we can't warm you anymore from the outside, Dave. We've got to warm you from the inside. And they gave me a bottle of rum. That was my first Drink. That I'm was not... your first drink. And your last. <laughs> your last. What do you make of this? I, I, I'm i neither here nor there because, quite frankly, by 2 a.m., which is where the closing time is in an awful lot of the country, I'm well past bedtime. <clears throat> well, you I, are, I'm Brian. an old guy. But, you, you know, here's the thing, Brian. I mean, I remember when I was a kid in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, my grandfather would bring me to a LCBO, a Liquor Control Board of Ontario store. That, what a fitting name. And yep. I'm not making this up. It was like a church. You walked in, you kept your voice down, you don't dare laugh. You got a little mini golf pencil and you filled out this card. It was like I remember to- that. And it was it just... You slid the paper under, like, the, the old bank teller thing, and they put, put the bottle underneath, and you were required to drive home straight away. You couldn't, you couldn't stop anywhere. Correct. And, and also, the glare you got from the bureaucrat sliding you that uh, Mickey, it was, you know, it was like you committed... <laughs> of course, now they're Taj Mahals, and they're giving you air miles and contests and what have you. But in Cooking many lessons res- at one near my house. <laughs> well, but, Brian, in many respects... We are still in the Stone Age when it comes to supposed world-class cities and their alcohol when it comes to going to the bar. Now, you said something by 2 a.m., you, you, you've had enough. Hey, same with me. But you know what? There are hundreds of thousands of people in the GTA alone, Brian, who are on shift work. You get off, say, at midnight. By the time you drive to the pub, park the car, sit down, they're already saying last call. I say give business the choice. I know government's not big on choice, and they no. think we're imbeciles, but if, the, if a pub wants to run 24-7, why not? It's a legal product. I, I'm not sure that they would get an awful lot of business, so I think there would be a limited number of them. I have no great viewpoint one way or another because... I really don't see myself sitting up at the bar at 4 a.m. and saying, yeah, have another round. Yeah, but you know, here, there's another reason to extend the uh, drinking hours, right? A lot of people in Toronto in the uh, so-called entertainment district who have condos or houses, when it's last call, all at the same time, mobs of Lugans, you know, stagger out of these bars. It's a real, you know, noisy affair. If you had a, a service all through the night, you would break that up. People you would leave they'd at one. Stagger out one at, at a time. Pardon me? They'd stagger out one at a time. Yeah, exactly. You know, but it'd be less of a mob scene. But again, it, it, it's the choice element. And how preposterous is it for you know? I, I guess you know people that want to be part of the Women's Christian Temperance Union to come forward and say this will lead to a spike in uh, drinking and driving. No, what do you base that on? Because if I'm legally drinking the limit at 3 a.m. versus 3 p.m., or going over the limit for that matter, what difference does the well, time of day have to mean? The, the, we'll leave it at this, but the, the fact is, the hardcore drinkers, you're never actually going to deal with them. They will not listen to the law. They will not listen to reason. They will not listen to the punishments handed out by the courts. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have an answer for them, short of locking them up permanently. Menzies, great talking to you. We'll chat soon. We'll leave it to the audience. Okay, i got to get the bitties before it closes.